Apostles Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the Archbishop of Toronto, His Eminence Thomas Cardinal Collins. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Kelowna, British Columbia. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for favors received and for peace in the family. Because of your gift, thousands of the faithful across Canada can begin a new week with this sacred celebration, and on their behalf, I thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. From the successor of Alexander the Great came forth a sinful root, Antiochus Epiphanes, son of King Antiochus. He had been a hostage in Rome. He began to reign in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days, certain renegades came out from Israel and misled many, saying, let's go and make a covenant with the Gentiles around us. For since we separated from them, many disasters have come upon us. The, this proposal pleased them, and some of the people eagerly went to the king, who authorized them to observe the ordinances of the Gentiles. So they built a gymnasium in Jerusalem, according to Gentile custom, and removed the marks of circumcision, and abandoned the Holy Covenant. They joined with the Gentiles and sold themselves to do evil. Then the king wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and that all should give up their particular customs. All the Gentiles accepted the command of the king. Many even from Israel gladly adopted his religion. They sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. Now on the 15th day of Chislev, in the 145th year, they erected a desolating sacrilege on the altar of burnt offering. They also built altars in the surrounding towns of Judah and offered incense at the doors of the houses and in the streets. The books of the law that they found, they tore to pieces and burned with fire. Anyone found possessing the Book of the Covenant or anyone who adhered to the law was condemned to death to decree by the decree of the king. But many in Israel stood firm and were resolved in their hearts not to eat unclean food. They chose to die rather than to def be defiled by food or to profane the Holy Covenant and they did die. Very great wrath came upon Israel. The word of the Lord.
much indignation seizes me because of the wicked. Those who forsake your law, though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. that I may keep your precepts. Those who persecute me with evil purpose draw near. They are far from your seek your statutes. I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus approached Jericho, a man who was blind was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And the man said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. And immediately he regained his sight and followed Jesus, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, praised God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I frequently recommend to people to read a very wonderful book from the Russian Christian tradition called The Way of a Pilgrim, which comes from the 19th century, and speaks about a person who went searching to find the secret of prayer. And he went all over Russia hunting and looking and finding and asking questions and how are we to pray constantly? And finally, in the course of his pilgrimage, he discovered the Jesus prayer, that what we should do all the time is say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
That prayer is uh, very deep within the Christian tradition. It is indeed a profound prayer, which I recommend to everyone to pray all the time. It could be prayed quietly, secretly. It could be prayed constantly. Sometimes uh, people pray it on a rosary, just saying, saying the Hail Mary, say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy in me, a sinner. It has within it all that we need. Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and my God, Son of the living God, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy. We say a form of the Jesus prayer at the beginning of every Mass. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. We need to know, each one of us, we're in need of the mercy of God. We don't have it all. We're not all together. We are people who are in so many ways empty. Our hearts are restless till they rest in the Lord. And we find our peace only in the Lord God. We need to begin with an awareness of our need. Our need for God, for God's mercy, and our need for others as well. Because our greatest problem is if we're full of ourselves. If we're full of ourselves, there's no room for God and there's no room for anyone else. And so the beggar at the side of the road in today's gospel, which is one of the biblical sources of the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. When we reflect upon his words, he knew he needed. He needed help. He needed to see, and he knew that by asking our Lord Jesus for that, he would find what he sought, and indeed he did. He was given physical sight, and that was a gracious gift in his life, although, of course, only a temporary one because he is dead, and uh, physical miracles only do something temporarily. What we need, each one of us, more is to know our need for God, if we're not full of ourselves, to know our need for sight, to be able to see God, to see other people for what they are, to see God's will in our life. And we use our mind to find those things, but above all, we need to put our ha ourselves in the hands of the Lord, as the beggar did outside of Jericho in today's gospel. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. If I know that reality, that I am a sinner in need of God's mercy, then I will be open and have a capacity to receive the mercy of God, the love of God. I will be able to receive sight so that I can see what this world is really about. And I will also perhaps be given blindness, healthy blindness to the faults of my neighbor. We need to be blind to the faults of others and have sight into our own need for God's mercy and sight into the will of God in this world, all of which comes to us. As we look at the way our Christian tradition has developed the prayer of the beggar of Jericho, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me a sinner. Now let us offer our prayers to Almighty God. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for God's blessing upon him, and that we pray for the Church throughout the whole world, especially wherever it is facing persecution. We pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for all of those in the world who are facing natural disasters and in a very special way we pray for the people of the philippines who are recovering from the terrible storm that they have suffered in these days we pray to the lord we pray for all of our families in particular any that are facing any struggles or difficulties we pray to the lord let us pray that those who have drifted away from the practice of the faith will return. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers which we offer to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Dear Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wound, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to seek reward, save that of knowing 
that I do your will. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In these days, we have heard of the great suffering in the Philippines as the terrible storm has wrought such havoc and destruction with such loss of life and such terrible suffering. It is a time for us to, to pray for the repose of the souls of all those who have died, to pray for those who have been injured, and to pray that help will be on the way to effectively help those who are suffering so much. We also pray for the people in this country who are so devastated by the, the sufferings of their family members at home and also to send what help we can uh, to make donations to those who will be able to send this money, the, in, the aid agencies that can send this to the Philippines, and it will be doubled actually by the Canadian government. So I encourage everyone to, to do what we can to help the people who suffered so much in the Philippines. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and remain with you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Kelowna, British Columbia, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10, and if you'd like to order it, just send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C, 2M6.